Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Josh with US Cutter and today I finally get my hands on the latest sawgrass printers to hit the market. The SG500 and the SG1000 are the newest desktop dye sublimation printers from Sawgrass. They are replacing the older SG400 and SG800 printers. And let's be honest, at first glance, you're not really going to see much of a difference there. But as the old saying goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. Let's take a quick look at a document that Sawgrass sent over that tells us a little bit about the differences between the two. Up top, we have each of the printer models listed with a separate category listed down below. First, you have the print sizes, and you're going to see that they're the same as they were in the old generation with the new generation. You can even use the same bypass tray from the older models for the 500 and 1000. The 800 bypass tray will fit in the 1000. The 400 bypass tray will fit in the 500. The printers have different maximum print widths, so the larger 800 and 1000 bypass tray will not fit on the smaller 400, 500, and so forth. The voltage is the same across the board. You're going to plug it into a normal three prong outlet. The next category that we have is going to tell you about the print speed and the max resolution that it can handle. Everything is the same, except the new generation can do a max DPI that's much higher. That way, if you want some really nice photo realistic images on hard surfaces, you can do some great looking ones with the new Sawgrass 500 and 1000 because of this. But the downside is you can see that it takes a little bit of time. Color management software, that is your Sawgrass print manager software. And this is what you use to print out your designs. I will be discussing this in further detail later in the video when we get to the software install part. Next, we have the ink cartridge side of things. There have been quite a number of changes when it comes to the cartridges. For the 500 and 1000, all of the cartridges come with the same amount of ink inside of them. The 500 can only use standard size ink cartridges, while the SG1000 can use the standard size as well as the extended size cartridges. Now, there's a third size of cartridge that isn't being shown on here, but that is the starter size cartridge. These are usually sold with new machines and they only have 20 milliliters of ink inside of them. If you're using these as your first cartridge, it's going to take most of the cartridge to fill the ink lines. So please keep that in mind if you're planning a large print run as soon as you get this machine. Last but not least, we have three different types of inks that Sawgrass currently offers for these printers. The Sublijet UHD is Sawgrass's flagship sublimation ink and it's now better than ever, delivering richer, more vibrant color on both hard and soft surfaces, including heat transfer vinyl. After that, we have the Caesar Easy Subly ink, and this is an innovative product that delivers great results on conventional substrates, but is specifically engineered to work amazingly well with the Caesar Easy Subly vinyl. So it's still sublimation ink, but if you're wanting to create designs for polyester and cotton, uh, this is a really good option for you. Also, it works great with vinyl cutters that have the arms feature. And then finally, we have the Chromoblast UHD. Chromoblast ink and paper work together to chemically bond your design to 100% cotton, opening the door to long lasting cotton apparel. It also works great with an arms vinyl cutter. Finally, let's take a look at the special features for each. The 500 and 1000 now offer wireless connection. They also offer increased DPI that we talked about. They upgraded the processor inside of it so that your jobs will start faster once they have been received by the printer. It still has its self-cleaning features. Just leave the machine plugged in. Once you put ink inside of it, it'll take care of itself as long as it's plugged in and powered on. Then finally, the new modules have modulated dot technology, and I'm no engineer, but that uses some advanced hybrid screening technologies that in short give you a sharper looking image. If you want to nerd out on that and go down a rabbit hole, you can Google it and find some published research papers and some US patents that you can pursue at your leisure. It's a little, little too much for me. Well, there's your introduction to these machines. So let's unbox each of these printers, starting with the SG500. When you open it up, you will find an instruction manual sealed and taped to the top of the protective wrap surrounding the printer. Taped on the side of the printer is going to be a bag containing the power cable and USB direct connection cable. 
Once removed from the box and the protective wrapping, you will see blue tape all over the machine that was added to protect and keep anything from coming loose during the shipping process. You're going to want to remove that before going any further. When you open up the SG-1000, it's more of the same. The instructions are taped on the top with the power cable and USB cable taped to the side. You want to remove the plastic wrap and all of the blue tape from the outside of the machine. Once you have all of the tape removed, let's go ahead and plug the machine in and load in the ink cartridges. You want to plug in the power cable so that it's on the side shown here. And as for the ink cartridges, the right side of the printer has the door that opens up and allows the ink cartridges to slide right in. On the back side of the ink compartment door, you will find a little guide showing you the location for each color as well as the serial number for your machine. This compartment also contains your waste ink collector unit as well. That waste unit collector will already be inserted inside your machine when purchased. Remember, the SG500 can only use the smaller starter cartridges and standard 31 ounce cartridges, while the SG1000 can use those two as well as the extended cartridges. Once you put each cartridge in and shut the little door on the 500 or 1000, it will start to fill the ink lines with ink and ask you to not touch the printer for a few minutes while it does this and adjust the prints heads. This is a good time to move over to the software side of things. For this step, we will want to open up our web browser and go to the website www.sawgrassinc.com. Once at this web page, we are going to want to create a Sawgrass account. This is going to allow us to log into the Sawgrass Print Manager and other programs that Sawgrass offers. Once the account has been created, we then want to download the Sawgrass Print Manager and install it. You can download it for PC or Mac, but for today's example, we will be installing it on a PC. If you would like to see it installed on a Mac, you can click the video linked in the description down below. When you start the installation process, you will select the language of your choice, and then it will ask you to select the components to install. Just go for all of the components. Once we have installed the software, it's going to ask you to reboot your computer. But as soon as it reboots and opens up the print manager, it's going to ask you to enter a username and password. You want to use the credentials for the account that we just created at sawgrassinc.com to log into the Sawgrass print manager. Once you've logged into your account, the printer's window will pop up, and from that window, we can select Set Up New Printer by clicking the button, and that will allow us to select our printer from this drop-down menu. If you select the SG-1000 like I did here, it will show you a nice little picture and give you some basic stats on the printer. Once you click the Install button down below, it will tell you that the print manager will need to be restarted. It's exactly the same thing if you select to install the SG500 printer. Once you've selected your printer and clicked OK, it's going to open up the user agreement and it's not very long if you want to take a look at it before accepting the agreement and clicking Next. Once you agree, the next pop-up will ask you if you would like to add a new printer or update a current printer. As you know, we're in the process of installing the 500 or 1000, so we're going to select Add New Printer. Next, a pop-up will appear asking us if we are connecting it via a USB or network connection. If you're using a USB cable to connect to your computer, it will ask you to unplug and turn off the printer. After that, you will install the software and then connect your printer and then turn it on so that it can recognize the port. As I mentioned before, this machine has Wi-Fi. So let's show you how to connect it to your network and install it in that way using the menu on the front of the printer. We want to hit the menu button and then use the keypad to navigate to the system settings and then push OK. Once inside the system settings menu, we want to go and highlight interface settings and press OK. Once inside the interface settings, you want to highlight the network option and then press OK. Then inside the network menu, you want to go down a few pages until you reach LAN type as an option and highlight that. Hit OK once you've highlighted it. The default method is set to Ethernet, so if you wanted to just plug it directly into your network using a Cat5 cable, you can right out of the box, but we want to do the wireless. So we're going to highlight wireless LAN and then press OK to switch it over to Wi-Fi mode. 
Next, you want to hit button to go back to the interface menu and then select wireless LAN. This brings us to the wireless LAN menu and from here we want to select wireless LAN easy setup. Once inside the wireless LAN easy setup menu, you want to highlight SSID auto search and press OK. This will scan all the local wireless networks and allow you to select and enter a password if necessary. If you have a more complex network than this, you may have to do some additional things, but this method should work for almost everyone. Now that we have our printer connected to our network, we can finish the installation. So back at our computer, we're going to be back at the install screen and it's going to be at the select method to add print pop-up. And then we're going to select connect a printer port or LAN. By default, it should have search for printers automatically selected and we should be able to click next and move on with no problem. It will then show you a screen with a set of instructions telling you to make sure power to the printer is on and that the LAN cable is connected and that the IP address has been specified. Even though that we just switched the printer over to wireless mode, it is always going to say that you need to connect the LAN cable. That just happens to be something in the install file that they forgot to update. When you click next, it will then start to search your network and find the printer. You will then want to highlight it and then click next and we can finish the installation. The next pop-up will be the install printer driver and most people will just click continue, but I would recommend that you uncheck the default printer box because you will never want to send your prints directly to the printer. You send them directly to the Sawgrass print manager. After we click continue, the printer driver will install and then the final pop-up asking you to make your initial settings for the printer will appear. If you click setup now, you can set things like media size and type, but I would strongly suggest that you leave it as default by clicking do not set now and letting the Sawgrass print manager handle that for you. After we press OK and open the print manager again, it'll ask you to select the ink for your printer. You may also want to make sure that you have it enabled. I have an older SG400 disabled right here, so it won't show up in my Sawgrass print manager when I go to print things. Once you select the ink, the Sawgrass print manager will ask you to restart the program one last time, and then you will be ready to print. If you are using the Caesar Easy Subly ink in your machine, then you just need to activate that version of the Sawgrass print manager. To do this, you will go down to the icon tray of your taskbar and right click on the Sawgrass Print Manager icon. Once inside the menu, you want to select Options, followed by Edition. You can see that I already have Caesar and Forever Editions activated, but most likely you won't have those, so you will need to select Enable Custom Edition. This will bring up the Activate Edition pop-up window. Inside of this Activation pop-up window, you want to type Caesar with a capital S and then click Apply to activate that version. If you want to activate Forever, then you can just type in Forever with a capital F. I've made some videos about both products that you can check out later if you like. This video is already getting pretty long, so I don't want to add that in there too. Now that we have everything installed, we just need to make sure that everything prints right. Let's load some paper into the printer and do just that. When loading your sublimation paper into the SG500 and SG1000, you want to put your print side facing down inside the tray at the bottom. The 1000 can also fit larger 11 by 17 sheets inside of it. To make the tray larger and to fit that on the SG1000, you just push these tabs in on the side and then slide the tray out like so and then pop the tabs back in. With the paper loaded properly, let's perform a nozzle check. To do so, we're going back into the Sawgrass Print Manager menu found in the icon tray in the taskbar and selecting Printer Utilities. Inside the Printer Utilities, we have a few different tabs up top to select from, but the main one we're going for is the nozzle check one right here. When you do that, it's going to have a button down at the bottom that you just want to press, as well as an example with an explanation. If you have multiple printers connected like me, you can switch between them in a drop-down menu in the top left corner. With both of my machines giving me perfect nozzle checks, let's print out something. You can print from any program you like, or load an image directly into the Sawgrass Print Manager through the menu from the icon tray in the taskbar down below. 
For this example, I'm going to be sending a job directly from Vinyl Master DSR. When I go to print, I want to make sure that my image is mirrored and that the printer selected is the Sawgrass Print Manager. You never want to send a job directly to the SG500 or the SG1000 because it won't have proper colors and it will use more ink than is needed for that substrate. Once you hit print with the Sawgrass Print Manager set as the printer, it should automatically load the image and open the Print Manager giving you a few options. The Sawgrass Print Manager makes it as easy as possible. You just select the substrate paper type and the Sawgrass Print Manager will handle the rest. You have some other options here like your layout, job queue, color adjustments, and other things as well, but we're going to tackle that along with all of our sublimation papers that we have here in next week's video. So make sure you hit the subscribe and notification button so that you can see that as soon as it comes out. If you have any further questions about Sawgrass printers or any of the items we offer here at uscutter.com, you can reach our sales team at sales at uscutter.com. Each one of these machines do come with a warranty included, but that warranty is going to be handled by Sawgrass directly. So if you need to handle any support or anything like that, you can contact them at sawgrassinc.com. Thank you so much for watching, and did you know that you could also create metallic designs with sublimation ink? If you have some time, check out this video here to see how that's done. Some pretty neat stuff there. Thanks again for watching. Take care.